States and all of the world. So let me introduce myself first. My name is Midshipman Murray. I am an officer in training in Victoria's Royal Botanic Fleet. Uh, and assisting me, assisting being a very strong word, I'm still on the diet, a little bit commoner, which is Engineer Baldwin. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, more than all, it's Thursday afternoon. I'm Assistant Engineer Baldwin First Class. I've been on the ship for what, three years now since we first launched. And uh, I've done most of the time down in the engine room and boiler room. Uh, well, the thing is, I've got him to assist me showing you the weapons today because, to be honest, everybody else is on shore leave and Spice Island is having a good time and I didn't have much choice and I needed someone to lend me a hand. Now, he is uh, sort of commoner, so if you don't understand him, I do apologise. And if he smells too bad, you can stay a little bit further away. <laughs> Now today we're talking about small arms. Now the reason why we call it small arms is not just because we're walking around with tiny arms, it's because they're a lot smaller than our large arms, which are either guns, otherwise known on the land as cannons, which we'll see behind you. Small arms range from uh, sorts of revolvers, muskets, cutlasses, swords, which we're going to go for all today. Which basically means the best way to kill people easily, the best subject. If you don't know this sort of thing in school. So, what we're going to start with this. Now this is a tomahawk hatchet, or a rigging tomahawk. Now we started with this one because technically this is not a weapon, it is a tool. And the clues of the name it is for rigging. So this, much like an axe, all the weight is in the blade up top, so you have a nice swing down with it. Now this is actually mainly for cutting ropes and rigging on the top deck. But the reason why we include this in the small arms demonstration is as you can imagine, if you're happily cutting away at the rigging and you suddenly get boarded by a French ship and a Frenchman is running at you and you just gave him a smack round the head with this, it is still going to do a lot of damage. And the other thing you can double up as is something we call a boarding axe. Now boarding is when you go as close as you can to the enemy ship, incapacitate it so that it can't sail away and then your marines and some of your men will jump on board and try and take the ship because it's uh, cheaper and easier to steal a ship and change the flag than to build your own. So what you would do is jump on board, hook into the wood with this side, climb up to the top deck of the ship, and then you would hack away at any ropes or rigging so they cannot sail away so you can get more people on board and eventually take it. But as I said before, once again, if you're hacking away at enemy's rigging and one comes up to you with a cutlass, you know, you can turn it this way, make a nice big hole in their skull. Lovely, though. I mean, it is warfare. Warfare is a very nice kind of thing. But this, to be honest, it is a little bit useful. We do include it, but you wouldn't really use it. It's not quite as good as the cutlass, which I'm going to pass you unfortunately over to Baldwin. Baldwin, take it away. Thank you, uh, sir. I think you're into cutlass. And this one we've got this is uh, the longest cutlass the Navy ever actually issued. It's a very heavy weapon, you see. Now, uh, unlike your classical sword, the stabbing, this is for chopping, really. Glorified meat flavour, if you will. Now, uh, as I say, it's a chopping weapon. All the weight is in the blade. Now, a sword, you want it well balanced. You want to be able to put it on your finger in it, uh, it stay there and out of it. This is for chopping. So, say a froggy, French of course, say he sticks his hand to one of your gun ports, and you're in a hurry, you grab one of these, you take it from the 12 o'clock position, like that, down to the 6 o'clock position, that is going to chop his limb off in one clean go. Yeah. You don't want to mess with one of these, you see? Take a man's arm or his leg off, or if he's lying down, tend to his head if you so wish, although uh, slightly more messy. And also, you don't want to try stabbing a man with that. It's very heavy. If you stab a man with that, you're going to get stuck inside of him. The last thing you want is to be stuck face to face with a froggy with this garlicky uh, breath in your face. Not very nice at all, I'm afraid. You know, no man is going to smell bad. If you stab a man with that, you're stuck. There's no groove down the side, you see. See, uh, as uh, Mr. Murray will show you, the sword's got a little groove down the side. That means when you stab a man, his muscles will contract, but your blade don't get stuck. With this, there's no groove. You stab him, his muscles contract around your blade, you're stuck inside it. You lose your weapon, uh, you will die, but not very quickly. So, yeah, that is your chopping weapon. 12 blocks down to 6 o'clock, uh, limb straight off. There you go. Terribly uncouth and primitive. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite on the same level as one of these. Now this is an officer's sword. So it comes uh, with its own holder, like this. What you do is release the catch, and you can release your sword. 
Now, every single officer has one of these. Now, these aren't standard issue. You do have to pay for your own sword. So if you started off with a low-level officer, you may buy one second-hand. But when you get a bit older, you have more money to hire an officer, you then pay for your own. Now, it is adorned with something very fancy on the handle. You see this grey material? This is adorned with a type of animal skin that you're handling. Now, can anybody guess what this grey skin might be? Anybody, just yell it out to me. What do you think? What do you think this is? What kind of animal? Snail! Not, not a snail. Seriously. How uneducated. What do you think? What do you think? Stingray. Stingray. Not seal. Not snake. Seal was closest. But it's shark. A creature. Shark. Well done. Now, this is genuine shark skin. Supposedly, for good grip. So when your hands are sweaty, it doesn't slip off. But to be honest, officers are very rich and we do like to show off. So it's mainly just have some very expensive material on your sword. Now, on the top, you do have the lion's head to show that this is an English sword because everybody knows the lions are English. <laughs> <laughs> you also have the naval insignia on the bottom as well, just in case you forget who you're writing for. You can have a look at the oh, yes, I'm in the naval. <laughs> now, as uh, Bolger was saying, you see this it has a nice long spine running through it. And like a cutlass, it is slightly curved, uh, making it sort of a sea weapon, a naval sword. Now, the spine means, once again, not very nice, because this is a stabbing weapon. If you did go in, you're not going to get stuck inside. But if you really want to make it really nasty, you just give it a twist so the muscles don't contract around it, and then pull it straight out. Lovely kind of stuff, isn't it? Very nice. Now, one of these... As Bob was just described, it is nicely balanced because all officers have trained as young gentlemen how to fence. And that was how we use this sort of weapon. You'd be in this sort of stance if you were doing it like so. Uh, but to be honest, officers don't really fight. We tell other people to fight. We, you know, you'd actually much rather, to be honest, as much as I hate to admit it, have a cutlass. If you went up against a cutlass with one of these, a strong cutlass would just probably break through one of these. Uh, so on board this ship, these are mainly for ceremonies. Only really have it on you when there's high up officers on board and you do a special salute. So you hold your sword next to you, place it to your lips to show that you respect your sword, then place your sword forward to show that you um, do anything to fight for freedom country, then you'll surrender your sword to show you won't do anything to fight against freedom country. But that is really your sword. It's very good for uh, close combat, but not very good for long range. Which leads me to. Thank you.